Latin is with us. Nigeria's corporate landscape faces a severe downturn as key players in consumer goods, brewing, and telecom sectors report substantial losses. The confluence of macroeconomic challenges, including inflation, currency devaluation, and tight monetary policies, has eroded profitability and hampered growth. Now, these financial setbacks have profound implications. As corporate earnings decline, we're also seeing government tax revenue, particularly corporate income tax, under pressure. Moreover, job creation, a critical economic driver is also threatened. Well, joining me to further review the Q2 results of select listed consumer goods companies is Felicia Wolokbe, Investment Research Analyst, Meristem Securities Limited. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you too. Now, before we look at the numbers specifically, I would like you to talk to us about, you know, what you make of the current macroeconomic conditions and the impact it's having on businesses and growth. I mean, just like you mentioned in your introductory statements, we've seen that Nigeria's current macroeconomic you know, environment has been characterized with different challenges. There's high inflationary pressures. Also, because of this inflation, we have the high interest rate environment as the monetary policy authorities try to curb inflation and, of course, the ICE, the NPR, which just results in higher cost of borrowing for these players. Also, the major challenge for especially consumer goods players has been the depreciation and the Naira, you know, owing to the forces of demand and supply in our country's FX markets. The depreciation of the Naira has led to the revaluation of foreign currency balances for some of these players. And of course, this has, this has impacted their financial performance. And we're seeing a lot of them record, you know, after tax losses, even, you know, losses before tax. And it's, 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 it's been, it's not been, you know, particularly unique to just one player. It's been a general challenge that these players have been facing. And, you know, we expect that these challenges might even continue in the, in the midterm, in the near to midterm. And that isn't good. Well, let's of start course, with Nestle. Course. Exactly. Beginning with Nestle, let's take a look at the results uh, from these consumer goods companies. If you can just have Nestle results displayed on the screen right now, so we'll look at that. Now, for Nestle, we can see the revenue, cost of sales, net finance cost, and all of those things. Now, talk to me. What's your overview of this result we have on the screen? I mean, just as it is displayed, you see that these companies, some of these companies, they've been able to, you know, achieve revenue growth through the implementation of price increases, and even play some some particular players have been able to grow volumes, which has led to, you know, notable increases in their revenue. But when it comes to the cost side, that's where the problem begins. Some of these companies, or so Nestle particularly, although Nestle does not import a lot of its raw material, its backward integration initiatives are paying off in that, you know, that respect. They still have to import their packaging materials, and then there's the impact of FX on the cost of raw uh, production in that aspect. But when you bring it down to their finance cost, that is where the real challenge for Nestle is. And Nestle has a significant you know, exposure to FX in, in, in the form of an intercompany loan from its parent company. And this loan is denominated in foreign currency and the USD particularly. And so when we see the depreciation of the Naira, it just means that this loan has to be revalued. And of course, the company you know, ends up recording foreign exchange losses due to these balances and this is one of the things that impacted. I mean, it will be notable that if we remove the impact of foreign exchange on the, the results for Nestle in Nigeria in, you know, H1 2024, the company could have recorded profit, you know, for of around maybe 7 to 10 billion naira, exceeding the impact on, of foreign exchange losses on the financial performance for the, for the period. Well, let me say this. Now, how concerning is the company's negative equity position and how does it sort of, you know, plan to address this? Well, it's, it's a concern because it just means that, you know, shareholder funds are eroded. The company's ability to withstand further shocks is, you know, is jeopardized because shareholder fund, which is like the, is supposed to be like a backup for when things like this happen, is completely eroded due to accumulated loss since the beginning of the depreciation. I mean, the significant depreciation of the Naira following the devaluation of the currency in June last year. And although the company has come up with different strategies to try and and improve their equity positions. You know, they came up to tell us that since it's the revaluation of our liabilities that is leading to these losses, they want to adopt, you know, 
another cost, you know, recognition method for their another recognition method for their their, their assets too. They want to start revaluing their assets at market prices to you know just make sure that it is balanced. We're not just record away, we're not just revaluing revaluing our our liabilities while we're leaving assets at historical cost, you know, methods. But we've seen that that has actually helped. We saw the company record around 150 billion in valuation gains. However, due to the fact that the challenge is still ongoing, they're still you know, recording accumulated losses, and that is what is still putting them in the negative, uh, negative equity you know, uh, in territory. And we just expect that, of course, they will continue the evaluation of assets and maybe that will provide you know, temporary relief, but as long as you know, the company still records a uh, negative uh, Accumulate, uh, they still record losses after tax. It will continue to impact their re retained earning components. So we're expecting to see maybe Nestle come up with strategies that would maybe raise capital or anything that would help them boost this equity position so that it just improves their shareholders from generally. Well, let's take a look at Dangote Sugar now. I mean, rising cost sort of uh, drive the, that particular company to 104.6 billion pre-tax loss in Q2. If we can have the slide for Dangote Sugar up there, so we look at you know uh, the performance from that particular stock. All right, and so looking at that particular one, I mean, we saw significant increase in current liabilities and also decline in gross profit. And I would like you to talk about, you know, the overall financial health of Dangote Sugar and what steps, you know, uh, the company should take to improve its position. I mean, for Dangote Sugar, though the situation is not, you know, in exactly similar to what Nestle is facing. I mean, it's it boils down to the impact of FX. Looking at Dangote Sugar, Dangote Sugar is a company that imports almost 100% of its raw material, that is sugar from Brazil. And that means that FX weighs heavily on its direct cost of production. And if you look at their cost of their, their, their cost of production, you would, if you look at the breakdown, you would see that the prices, the cost of raw materials increased by around 105%. And that shows the impact of the depreciation of the Naira on the prices or on the cost of importing this sugar from Brazil during the period. And when you, you, you of course, added bearing on the gross profit of Vang Sugar and even operating profits. And when you look at their finance cost, you, saw that you see that finance cost increased by over 150%. However, the increase is not coming from, you know, maybe interest expense or, or, or the, ex, the, the interest interest cost of their debts. Major, the, the, the bulk of this, you know, finance cost is coming from foreign exchange losses that they are recording on their import facilities because of the fact that they, they are exposed to the FX market a lot due to the necessity of importation for their raw material, basically. Well, looking at debt profile, really, how sustainable do you think Dangote Sugar's debt profile is? And what are the risks associated with, you know, its new plan now of relying on commercial papers and even bank overdraft? When you, when, of course, when you look at its debt profile, the company has, you know, come to the market, the capital market in recent, you know, periods to issue commercial papers. And, of course, every company has, you know, they have to take on the overdraft bank loans just to be able to maintain working capital. But the major problem for Dangote Sugar would not be this commercial paper raises or the, the bank overdraft. Really, the company would be sufficiently able to service these loans if not for the impact of the foreign exchange, the precision of the Naira on its import facilities, which impacts the total finance cost, which is what you are seeing play out for Q2 2024. Right, interesting. Let's look at Bois Foods now. That's uh, it's posted 24% profit growth and missed 27.4 billion dollar forex loss. I mean, that's sort of huge. Now, given the impressive profit margins, you know that uh, Bois Foods achieved in H1 2024. Do you think Bois Foods can sustain this level of profitability in the face of potential inflationary pressures, rising input costs, and even increased competition within the consumer goods sector? I mean, taking a look at this particular result, you want to say that it sort of looks very good compared to its peers. Maybe it's outdid or even at performed its peers but let me get your thoughts on this 
I mean, for that sugar, we've seen that, uh, for boa foods rather, we've seen that boa foods has been able to expand its volumes. One major driver of profitability for boa food has been the ability to, you know, establish brand presence, improve its brand equity, to grow market and uh, market share to grow volumes and of course the inflationary pressure also necessitates price increase for some of these products which means bank, uh, Boa Foods has been able to grow its revenue significantly. If you look at the financials you see that even Boa Foods recorded you know FX loss of around 27 billion but the significant jump in its revenue was able to offset all these increases in its you know cost of sales and its finance costs and that is what is driving the profitability that we see and going forward the you know the the, the the outlook for if they'll be able to sustain this profitability or this level of profitability will be inched on how much they're able to maintain market share how they're able to continue to drive volume we see that boa foods is it in its you know expansion stage they are you know doing a lot of expansion and also the company's revenue is not just you know, coming from maybe one segment, one business segment. So these are the things that are helping the company maintain, you know, profitability in the face of all these challenges that the, the, the industry is facing. They, they've been able to grow revenue significantly. And their revenue is not just coming from one business segment, which is one thing. This diversification, it helps to offset, you know, how the, the current macroeconomic environment impacts one particular business segment. Right. Uh, I'd like us to wrap up this way. I'm going to talk about NASCON now. So if you can have NASCON Resort posted up there. And for NASCON, it's posted 13% profit decline in Q2. Uh, that's despite revenue growth. So looking at this particular one, looking at the significant decline in gross margin, what specific actions is NASCON taking to mitigate the impact of you know, rising raw material costs and improved profitability? We'll close on that and then we'll probably then do more like a comparative analysis. So let's have that on NASCON and then we'll do a comparative analysis analysis of these four consumer goods uh, companies. Alicia. I mean, for, for, for NASCON, you see, you see that NASCON, I would not say came late to the party, but they did not experience the impact of the depreciation, the devaluation of the Naira and the subsequent depreciation. The impact was not you know, immediate on the performance of NASCON. And that's because they have like a third party procurement you know, company. It's like an intercompany arrangement that gets its, this company is in charge of sourcing raw materials for NASCON. And they have like a contract you know, for I think a two-year contract that just expired earlier this year. So this contract sort of protected them against the impact of the devaluation of the Naira and even the subsequent depreciation that we saw last year as they already had a contract in place for the sourcing of their raw materials. So the, the, the impact that we've started seeing, you know, for Q1 and even Q2 2024 is because the contract just expired, of course, so they have to enter into another contract. And this contract, will, I mean, there would be an impact of FX on this new contract that they are about to enter into and that's what we are seeing but given that you know the naira has been relatively stable i mean the depreciation we've seen especially in q2 2024 has not been as significant as what we've seen between june last year and march this year i would say that of course their cost will remain you know elevated now that the impact of this you know market you know challenges and conditions were reflected in their financial performance but seeing that we are not expecting you know very significant depreciation of the naira in the in the near to meet them we believe that their costs would remain elevated but maybe not spike by so much okay just before we go to that that comparison what's the company's outlook for raw material costs in the coming quarters in 30 seconds and then we'll do more like a comparative analysis and close on this mm -hmm. Like, like I just mentioned, of course, we expect that costs will see increase. I mean, due to the fact that they are exposed to the to, to the foreign exchange markets to source foreign exchange to import their 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 raw materials. So, movements in the foreign exchange markets, movements in the cost on the price of naira against other currencies will still continue to impact their cost of production. I mean, that, that that's the expectation going forward. But so the extent would now just depend on what would be seen in the FX market, how much the Naira depreciates against the dollar. Okay, so comparative analysis basically of the four stocks that we just reviewed today. What's your thoughts for um, shareholders? 
I mean, uh, we've seen that, you know, since the beginning of this challenge in the industry, since we saw all these, you know, challenges come up, high interest rates, which increased cost of borrowing, the inflationary pressures, that is no news, and even the constant depreciation of the Naira. We've seen different companies come up with different strategies to shield themselves and you know make sure that they're able to optimize their operations and improve profitability. And uh, we've seen different strategies from different companies and we've seen the impact of these strategies. We've seen Nestle try to revalue its assets to match the evaluation of its you know, liabilities, although that has not necessarily, you know, maybe close to the gap so far. But I mean, what would they expect to see would be, you know, means and we would like to see, you know, strategies or, or, or plans to maybe close up their foreign exchange exposures, maybe pay down some of these company loans, intercompany loan, a proportion of it, if, you, if they're able to close the gap on this loan, which is their major source of, you know, maybe exposure to the FX, that might be something that could help them adopt better. Right. We'd see that Boa Foods is still able to maintain profitability. Nascon is still able to maintain profitability. Why maybe Dang Sugar and Nestle are still in the fields of the old problem. Right. Felicia Wolopo, Investment Research Analyst, Maritime Securities Limited. Thank you for your time and your thoughts on the show today. Thank you very much for having me.